How's it going everybody? Zach here, back with a very, very important video for all of you today. In today's video, I am going to be talking a little bit more about my salvation testimony, about how I uh, came to be saved, a little bit more about my Christian roots and my history here. It's something that's been long, long overdue. Uh, it's something that the Lord's burdened me with and has put on my heart, so I thought that today is the best day, if not finally, to make my salvation testimony once and for all for all of you viewers out there. You know, the truth of the matter is I had been making frequent inferences and implications in my videos throughout time that I am a Christian, fostering conservative beliefs and everything, but I hadn't made a salvation testimony video. I hadn't proclaimed to all of you out there who've been watching me for quite some time now of how I came to be saved and how you can be saved as well. And so that's really the purpose of this video. It's really the job of every Christian to share their testimony with the world, to preach the gospel to every living creature, because ultimately salvation in Christ alone is the most important decision that anyone could ever make. And so without further ado, I'll tell you a little bit more about my history as a Christian, uh, how I got saved, my salvation testimony a little bit, and also talk a little bit more about how you can be saved as well. If you haven't, trust, if you haven't trusted Christ alone as your personal Lord and Savior, you know, now would be a good time to do it because we are living in perilous times and now is as good as a time as any because... You never know when you're going to die. And so it's going, to get a, it's going to get a little bit heavy here, but I encourage you for you all to stick through this video because this is a video that you definitely need to watch and tune into, especially if you're not saved. So a little bit about my background. Um, I grew up in a Christian household. I've been saved since the age of six. You know, I grew up predominantly in an Assemblies of God church, a Pentecostal church, which I will say that for the record, I do not subscribe to a lot of the doctrines that the Pentecostal and the Assemblies of God uh, Church teaches, but I was saved at a young age, and it came because I had a profound question that every five or six-year-old has at that age, which is, hey, when I die, what happens? Where do I go when I die? And thankfully, I had a loving father and a Christian family, a Christian household that I grew up in that told me the truth, that at the end of the day, when you die, you are going to spend eternity in one of two places. You're either going to spend eternity with God in heaven, or you're going to spend eternity in a literal fiery pit of hell where you burn there forever. And for a five or six year old kid, not just in a Christian household, but for any other kid for that matter, that's enough to really terrify you to your soul. That's enough to really place a big burden on your heart about where you're going to end up when you die. And it didn't take much convincing. I trusted Jesus Christ as my savior at the age of six or seven. You know, unfortunately, I'm not like one of those people that has a very clear-cut salvation testimony in terms of a specific date that I was saved, simply because in the church that I was living in at the time, you know, that was not something that was like, it wasn't something that we wrote down. It was like, oh, praise God, you're saved, you know, and it manifested itself in a way of, well, ask Jesus Christ into your heart and you'll be saved. It wasn't until many years later, in fact, until recently, that I found out that simply just asking Jesus Christ into your heart isn't really going to mean much unless you have the full gospel and much context behind that. Because really what I struggled with, what I proceeded to struggle with for the next 15 to 20 years was really knowing if I was saved or not. And I would say that that was a big, big factor in me recommitting my life to the Lord in the past couple of years and really living for Christ. Because... We all know, and you guys have probably seen in my past, some of the videos on here on this channel, you know, I'm not exactly a private figure. There's a lot of the music I used to play, a lot of the life that I used to live that's on this channel and on other parts of the internet if you go digging for it. But all this feeds into my personal testimony because the word of God in itself is the power of God unto salvation. You know, the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. You know, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. That's what the Bible says. And I believe that I really was recommitted and convicted when I heard the gospel again fully a couple of years ago. Now, I have no doubt that I was saved at the age of six because for the most part, I lived a somewhat Christian life, but I was living carnally. You know, I can't say that I always was in and out of church, was very infrequent when it came to that. And for the most part, I didn't really grow up in a Bible-believing church. A lot of churches out there may claim to be Bible-believing, but when you've spent a lot of time, if you have a similar testimony to me, and you've spent a lot of time in an Assemblies of God church, a Pentecostal church, or even a charismatic evangelical church, 
The topic of sin, hell, repentance, living for Jesus Christ doesn't get preached very often because it's just simply not popular. When you have to confront a lost soul or a fellow Christian and really confront them, rebuke them in terms of the sin that they have in their life and are dealing with, that's oftentimes going to be very difficult. And it's not the, the message that people want to hear. Because if it were the message that people were here, then we would hear it more often. But unfortunately, in a lot of the watered-down Laodicean churches that we live in today, we're not hearing that, which is very, very concerning because a lot of people may think that they are Christians, but they may stand before Jesus Christ one day and go, well, Lord, I did all these things for you, and Christ will proclaim to them, depart from me, I never knew you, ye that worketh iniquity. I mean, that's a very real thing. But back to my salvation testimony. A couple of years ago, the Lord convicted me. You know, it was time to start living for him again. It was just something that he was revealing to me, not just through his word, but through prayer and whatnot. Because from what I remembered completely and what I came to understand was that when you are saved, it's not a feeling. And that's contrary to what the Pentecostal church will teach you, which is, oh, if you have the gift of the Holy Spirit, you're going to speak in tongues. You're going to, you know, proclaim the, the signs and wonders that the apostles did. And, you know, I found out later on that that wasn't Bible, but we'll get to that in future videos. Um, but the truth of the matter is, you know, I, I was saved at six years old in a Christian household, but I never lived for Jesus Christ for the next 15 to 20 years. Yeah, there were Christian elements in my life, but I did everything essentially every worldly lost person would do. I listened to metal music. I was playing funk and rock and roll music and R&B and, you know, living like any other carnal Christian. Like I wasn't a horrible person. I didn't get addicted to drugs. I wasn't drinking or doing anything. But the truth of the matter was, if you had asked anybody if I was a Christian at that time, throughout the time I was giving up, I'm willing to bet that most of them would have said, well, yeah, he says he, he's a Christian and he goes to church, but that's about all I know. When in reality, that is not the biblical definition of what a Christian is, and that's what we're going to get to. But to kind of make a long story short as to how my salvation testimony, you know, has come about to this day was I found myself in a charismatic evangelical church where... I believe that that was a big part of my spiritual growth where Christ, where God was revealing a lot of things to me through the music because we were playing CCM. I was playing through, uh, I was playing worship music for this church. And one of the most popular songs that we were playing was a song called Reckless Love, which for those of you out there who listen to CCM, which I recommend you don't, um, probably know of. And it's a song about God's reckless love. But we all know, you don't even have to be a Bible, active Bible reader to know that God's love is not reckless. Reckless means not considering the consequences, careless, you know, not careful, reckless, not giving much care to, when in reality, God's love is precisely the exact opposite of that, which is it's perfect, it's holy, it's pure. And so that started a journey of me to find out that the music, number one, that I was playing in that church wasn't right. And a lot of people who've come out of Bethel Church and Hillsong Church and whatnot like that have similar testimonies. But then secondly, that the Bible that I was reading out of wasn't right. And so it was around the same time also that I got turned on to the King James Bible. And it was about a couple of years ago. I think it was at the end of 2018 when the Lord brought me back to Arizona and said, hey, you need to start living for me. You spent the past 23, 24 years of your life living on your own, living by your own will, doing your own thing. And I wasn't happy. I was miserable. You know, I seemed like I was doing well, but I was just kind of going through life, going through the motions. You know, my YouTube channel had exploded at that time. I became a bit of a political figure. But when he led me back to Arizona, that's when I started rededicating my life to the Lord and really living for him. But it happened because I heard the word of God and I heard the full gospel preached to me. And it was that pure assurance and security, that assurance of salvation that set me right. Because when you spend so, so many years of your life as a so-called Christian in a lot of these churches that are lukewarm... You never know that your salvation is, is real, and you don't even know if you're truly saved or that you can actually lose your salvation. And it wasn't until that I was preached that once you are saved, you are always saved. You are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus alone. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, that I really went. That spoke to me, and that convicted me, and then I believe that from then on, that's when God started really working in my life, and I started to live more for him. But I, it, it, it came also at a time where it was the music. The music in this charismatic church, which was no different from the churches that I grew up in. It was praise and worship music, people speaking in tongues, raising their arms like this. And God worked in my heart through the music. You know, through fellow YouTube videos on the, on the, on the channel that 
realize that the music that we were playing was having this type of impact. You know, it was not edifying, it was not profitable, and it wasn't really helping anybody grow as a Christian. So I got it out of that church through a recommendation of a Christian YouTuber friend of mine who recommended me to a good independent fundamental Baptist church that I'm currently going to now, which, you know, for all intents and purposes, I'm not going to name until <laughs> the time is right when I start, you know, working. Well, I mean, again, just to, I know I'm a public figure, so I don't want, I don't necessarily want to, to kind of draw too much attention to that. But long story short, you know, I... Now, you know, he led me to that church about the end of the year last year. And now I've been going to an independent Bible-believing Baptist church where, you know, the Word of God is really preached and I can really be fed in the Spirit. Because for so many years, I think what I was also lacking was good doctrine. I believe that the reason why, and this is just to wrap up my salvation testimony here, because it's not really a crazy, amazing salvation testimony. You know, I didn't have a near-death experience. I didn't have God reveal Himself to me. Because the truth of the matter is that's not how it always works. Salvation is believing on the gospel, you know. It is hearing the gospel, believing on it, and trusting Christ alone as your Savior. That is how to be saved. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in this video because that's really important. For those people out there who are lost, who have not trusted Christ alone as their Savior, you know, now is as good as any time as ever to be saved because spending eternity in a literal hell is not fun. So... Yeah, I'm kind of all over the place, but just to kind of tie in my salvation testimony, it wasn't until I heard good doctrine and the right doctrine that that spoke to my spirit, that convicted me. You know, I started using the right Bible, and, you know, thank God he's been leading me through that, that whole time period, and I found myself in a good Bible-believing Baptist church. You know, the same church I met my fiancé, and the same church that I'm still a part of now. But really, I guess the big takeaway from this salvation testimony was that for most of my life, I wasn't preached out of this book. The charismatic churches that I've been going to my whole life, the Assemblies of God churches never preached on sin. They never preached on sin very heavily. Therefore, I never had a real reason to live right. Because why would I live like a Christian if my sin wasn't being dealt with? And it wasn't until I was confronted with my sin and also realized that I had eternal security in Jesus Christ that... It convicted my spirit and I was finally, you know, recommitting to the Lord and I knew that my salvation was pure. Because I'm sure that the story that a lot of people have, which is why they probably don't live as much for the Lord, is because, well, they're not really sure of their salvation. They don't know what they're being saved from. I've heard story after story of so many charismatics and Pentecostals out there and everyday Christians that have to get on their knees every night and pray and plead to God to know if they're really saved or not. Because in those churches, they teach you that they can, you can lose your salvation. And so that is a perverted, corrupt gospel that I was exposed to for many years, which is why I never worked out my salvation with fear and trembling until a couple of years ago, until God really convicted me, showed me his word and truth through the word of God. And that's what I want to do for a lot of you here. So I'm going to take this time, the second half of this video, and you know, tell you a little bit more about how to be saved. If you haven't trusted Jesus Christ alone as your personal Lord and Savior, you know, don't die in your sins. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit more. Because at the end of the day, this is the thing that we have to confront. We are going to be held accountable to a God when we die. That's just the truth of the matter. Every one of us shall give account of himself to God. That's what Romans 14, 12 says. And regardless of what you believe is out there, we are going to spend an eternity, everybody alive today, in one of two places. You're either going to spend eternity in a literal pit, fiery hell, or you're going to spend eternity with Jesus Christ in heaven. That's it. Contrary to what a lot of Christian denominations may teach, there is no purgatory. There is either heaven or there's hell. And the reason for that is because it has to do with one thing. And that is your sin. Probably the biggest thing that's convicted me the most is my sin. Something that I repent from. Something that I actively detest. But thankfully it was something that was paid for. And so this is the pure gospel. This is how to get to heaven. This is how to be saved. The truth is regardless of what you think your relationship with God is. Whether you believe it spiritually or whatnot, Is not true unless you have believed on the gospel. Because prior to our sin being dealt with, we have no relationship with God. 
The biggest thing that every person needs to understand, especially if you're not saved, is that you are a sinner. Before God, you are a sinner. The Bible says very clearly that we are sinners from birth, that there is none good. Nobody is born a good person. Contrary to what you're taught and what you may believe of yourself, which is, hey, I'm a good person. I do good things. I'm a kind person. Um, I give to charity. You know, I, I, don't kill, I didn't kill anybody. I, I'm, a, I'm a good person. You know, I, I try to be kind to people. Truth of the matter is, is that there is none good. There is just none good. The Bible says very clearly in Romans 3.12 that they are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable, and there is none that doeth good, not one. The Bible also goes on to say in Ecclesiastes that there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Meaning you may do good, but you're a sinner. And the whole reason for why people die and go to hell is because they are sinners. Because they have sin that was not dealt with. And so what does this mean? What does this mean for the gospel? Well, the truth is, God loved us so much. You know, the most famous Bible verse of all time, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The way to heaven is through Jesus Christ alone. And I'll explain a little bit more about why and how that works. If you haven't really read the gospel itself, you can find the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15. Verses 1 through 4 speaks very clearly about the gospel. And I think since I have my Bible in front of me, you know, I might as well read it to you. 1 Corinthians 15 states that, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I have preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And if you believe that, you are saved. But there's more to the gospel than that that I was fundamentally lacking in a lot of the churches that I grew up in. And it wasn't until, like I said, that I heard the gospel full and full, eternal security, faith through, you know, grace through faith in Christ alone that is what saves you, not of works. Because a lot of people will say, well, I'm a good person. But the truth is, if you've ever broken God's law, if you've ever told a lie, then you are by default a sinner. When it comes to sin, it is all or nothing. The Bible says very plainly that whosoever shall keep the whole law, yet offend at one point, he is guilty of all. And so when we die in our sins and we find ourselves before God, is he going to find us guilty or innocent because of our sinners or sin? Well, obviously guilty. And that's why God, being the holy, pure, and just God that he is, has no choice but to send us to hell for our sins. Because God has no fellowship with sinners. We sin, and God cannot have anything to do with us. In fact, prior to us being saved, he doesn't even know us. Which is why that verse of John 3.16 is so important. And the Bible also says, Furthermore, that he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. That wrath of God is essentially hell that I talked about earlier in this video. So the one thing that you need to understand, first of all, is that you're a sinner. There's none good. You need to understand that before a holy and just almighty God that you are a sinner and that one day you're going to be held accountable to him. The Bible goes on to say that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is, through, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So because we are sinners, we have to pay the fine, the penalty for sin in, eternal, in, in hell for eternity. And that's a very soul-crushing thought. And you may think, well, how could a loving God send people to hell? Well, he gave us an option. And like I said, that's where Jesus comes into the mix. Jesus Christ was God manifest in the flesh. He lived a perfect, sinless life and died on the cross for our sins and rose on the third day, paid the price for our sins so that we wouldn't have to die, so that we wouldn't have to go to hell. And how we can know this is because the Bible is abundantly clear about the gospel of Christ, which is something that is fundamentally lacking in a lot of churches these days, and that they don't preach you a pure gospel. First, or 2 Corinthians 5.21 says that, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Notice that word righteousness. When you believe on Christ, who was made to be sin for us, who knew no sin, we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 
So that more and more sounds like when you go up there and God looks at you and judges you for being a good person or a bad person with Christ, you have his righteousness. And at the end of the day, it is faith alone in what Christ did on the cross that saves us. It is the belief in the blood that he shed on the cross for our sins, because the Bible is very clear that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And it is Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, believing on that, believing on the Son, that saves us. Earlier, I talked about John 3, 16. But whosoever shall believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is the gospel that it has the power unto salvation to everyone that believeth. And so you may think, well, I've been taught that there is different ways to heaven, that I believe in Jesus. Or are you sure that you have the right Jesus? Because the Jesus that saves is the Jesus that also proclaims that there is no other way to heaven but him. There are no other gods. Acts 4.12 says that neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus said to people that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one man cometh to the Father except by him. The only way to heaven, the only way to be saved from your sins, and the only way to escape an eternity in hell is by believing on Christ. And so you may be asking me right now, well, I know that I am a sinner, and so what do I need to do to be saved? How does one get saved? The Bible makes it very, very clear in Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth on the righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's a wonderful thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's the greatest gift that God could ever give you. And it's not something that you can work for, which is, I know, a hard thing for a lot of people to get across. You can't work your way to heaven. Because if you were never a good person to begin with, it's something that God has to give you to save you from, but you have to receive it. You have to call upon the name of the Lord. You have to confess the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that he died for your sins, that he rose on the third day, he was God manifest in the flesh, and that the shed blood on the cross was paid for your sins so that you wouldn't have to pay that penalty yourself. And that's the thing, is that when it comes down to it, that is the gospel in itself. And there's obviously a whole lot more verses that we can go through. But I wanted to make this video for those of you who are watching this, that if you haven't trusted Christ alone as your Savior, don't die in your sins. Don't die in your trespasses and sins. Not when you have a loving God that gave his life for you, that you can believe on, and you can be passed from death unto life. The truth is, the hardest thing for people to get across, and I want to make this very clear while I have the time and I have you know, the platform here, is that people think that good works are going to get them into heaven, that just being a good person is. But we've already made it very, very clear what the Bible says, that nobody is a good person. And there's no amount of works that will get you into heaven. It is only in what Christ did on the cross. Ephesians 2.8 says that, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Gift of eternal life. You don't earn a gift. You don't work for a gift. It is something that God has given you, and it is something that you have to ask him for, believe on, and receive. And that is the gospel that saves. That is what it means to be a Christian, to believe the gospel. Not in a good person, not going to church, not reading your Bible, believing and placing your faith in Christ alone and what he did for you. Furthermore, I also want to say, while I wrap up this video, that the Bible makes it very abundantly clear that to him that worketh not, but believeth on the one that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. And so all of a sudden now, when you die and you go to heaven and God looks at you, he is going to look at you as if you've done nothing wrong. That is what it means to be born again. When you're saved, you're born again. So if you've ever heard that term, that's what it means. It's a spiritual rebirth. When you trust Christ alone as your Savior, you have been reborn spiritually, and you will not die. You will not suffer the second death. You will not suffer hell. I mean, everybody's going to die one death, but it's a matter of where you're going to spend eternity, heaven or hell. And so I hope that this was comforting for those of you who are out there. If you've ever doubted your salvation, if you've ever struggled with that, which I did for many years because I didn't have the scriptures in front of me, I want to leave you with this. 
Jesus said very, very clearly, if you want to know for sure that you're saved, once you're saved, because again, it's once saved, always saved. God is, you are not keeping yourself saved. It is God who is keeping you saved. Every minute of every second of your life, once you are saved, it is God who's doing that. Meaning that if you sin, if you still fall into sin, you don't lose your salvation. He says that, he says it very clearly in 1 John, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Meaning that you may know, not think, not hope, not feel that you have eternal life. You know because you believed on Christ. And the Bible says it very clearly. Christ also said very clearly, my sheep know my voice. And they hear me and they follow me. Something like that, right? And I give unto them eternal life that they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. That's a given promise by Jesus himself. What you need to understand is that if you are saved and you truly have trusted Christ as your Savior, you are not keeping yourself saved. God is. Okay? Him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. And so if you're not saved, and I know I've been hammering this, this point home, I really want you guys to get this. If you're not saved and you're a lost person, don't die in your sins. You know, believe on Jesus Christ. Ask him to be your personal Lord and Savior, but more importantly, understand what he did for you. That he died on the cross for your sins, that he rose again on the third day, and he is giving you the gift of eternal life. If you'll trust him, if you'll confess your sins, and if you'll believe on him for everlasting life, he will save you in an instant. And you won't have to worry about where you're going to spend eternity. And so I hope that this video was helpful to you. I am going to post a more thorough salvation video about how to be saved because there's just so much Bible out there about how to be saved. And there's hundreds of verses about how to be saved. And I want to make sure that I took this time to at least give you a little bit more about the gospel here, but also share my salvation testimony because it is the most important decision that anyone can make in this life. It's where you're going to spend eternity and who you're trusting in, not in yourself, not in your works, but solely in Christ alone and what he did on the cross for you. So if you made it to the end of this video, praise God. Thank you so much for listening to this. I hope you, you, know, you got saved from watching this video. Please do let me know what you think in the comments below. I would love to hear you guys' testimonies as well. And if you're not a Christian and you're not saved yet, I encourage you. In fact, I plead, beg you to be saved. But at the end of the day, it is going to be your heart. You know, just praying a prayer and, you know, asking Jesus in your heart is not going to do anything. He really needs to transform you from the inside out. And how that's going to happen is through the Bible. For by faith cometh by hearing, right? And hearing by the word of God. And so if you'd like for me to do more salvation-oriented stuff, please let me know. Because I know that there's a lot of people that watch my stuff that are not saved. And I want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to hear the gospel to be saved. So... This was a very important video to make, and I'm so glad that the Lord has just given me the opportunity in this platform to share this. You know, I pray that you guys out there who heard this got something out of it, uh, that it was edifying to you, that, you know, the Lord works on your heart. And so, especially in perilous times like this, you know, now is the time to question your mortality and question where you're going to spend eternity. So without further ado, I'll leave you guys with that. If you liked what you saw, leave a like and a comment and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. This channel is going to start taking more of a faith Christian approach. I won't neglect the dating or the politics or the social commentary. But now that I've made my salvation testimony and what the Lord's done in my life, my identity is in Christ. Not in Democrats or Republicans, not in liberals or conservatives, but in Christ. So thank you guys. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.